Welcome to a brand new holiday tutorial all about making your own handmade DIY shadow box. Today we're going to be creating this joy to the world shadow box and the best part is this can be made for less than $10. These IKEA ribbon frames that we'll be using are anywhere between six to ten dollars depending on where you're located in the world. Other than the shadow box and make sure that you get the nine by nine with depth to it so you have space for your elements, you're going to need either a silhouette or Cricut machine or a good old X-Acto knife, the design that's linked down below which is the joy to the world design, and some adhesive. Make sure that it's permanent I'm using the Tombow Permanent Adhesive. And last but not least, you need your paper to do the cutout. The Strathmore Bristol paper is a great choice because it's a nice heavyweight cardstock, but you can choose any heavyweight cardstock or even chipboard that you might have around the house. As long as you can cut through it, it's fair game. But I do wanna say that the heavier weight, the better, because harder paper will stand straighter like a soldier inside your frame. I created this Joy to the World design using my iPad and Procreate. If you're interested in creating your own design and learning exactly how to do that to make sure that it fits inside your frame and has tabs and all the necessary places, you can click on the other tutorial below called How to Design Your Shadow Box Lettering. But for this one, we're going to use the Joy to the World that's also provided below. It's there in two options. The first option to download are the components that you'll need if you're going to be using a silhouette Cameo. The second option are the design elements you're going to need for an X-Acto knife. Now the X-Acto knife version is a little bit different because the design is flipped so that it will print mirror image. That way you can cut along the lines and you don't have to worry if you miss just a little bit because that will actually be on the back side of your design when you put it together into your frame. A few notes about printing. Whether you're printing for X-Acto knife cutting or you're going to be using your Silhouette Cameo, make sure that you're using that nice Bristol cardstock. And you might notice that it's not eight and a half by 11 like most printers would be. So the first thing you're going to need to do is trim your page to end up being eight and a half by 11. You want to manually feed this into your printer, especially if you're using a laser jet so that it doesn't have to roll through so many levels. It makes it really difficult and tends to get stuck because it's so thick. However, if you have a front feed or if you have an inkjet printer that just goes straight in straight out, that's a great option for this. Make sure that you're feeding it manually so that it doesn't have to turn very many times. Pull out your computer, hook up your cutting machine, and it's time for us to look at how you can get the design into your cutting program. I will be using the Silhouette Studio here. So once you have opened it, and I just have the most basic Silhouette Studio available, you can then open the file that is down below the video. There are two Silhouette files. You will need to open and print both of those because the paper that we're using is 9 by 12, which is not a full 12 by 12 piece, so we can't fit it all on one page. The first file has joy and two optional snowflakes, and then the second file has to the world and the banner that goes in the middle of your shadow box. These will both be shown as an outline, and you'll also see that they are oriented in such a way that your page will need to be oriented as a 12 inch across the top of your cutting mat. Once you've put your paper onto your cutting mat and loaded that into your cutting machine, you are going to select send up in the right hand side of your Silhouette Studio program. Now, since we are using Bristol board, that's actually heavier than any of the cardstock options given in the material drop down menu. Instead of choosing one of the cardstocks, scroll down to cover stock heavy, which is 105 pounds to 122. Now, Bristol board is only at 100, but if you choose the cardstock textured heavy at 80 pounds, it's not going to cut all the way through and you will not get clean lines. So this is definitely your better option. When you choose that, you'll see that the blade depth has moved up to seven. There's a speed of one, a force of 33 and a passes of two. So this is going to take a while to cut. 
I mean, it's enough time to go get a coffee and relax for a little bit and then come back and start to put this together. You're going to need to cut both of the files with the cover stock option on two separate pages of Bristol paper. Send those to your cutting machine, enjoy your cup of coffee, and I'll see you again in a minute. Now that all of our cuts are finally done, we have all of our pieces ready to go. You want to peel these off of your cutting mat and be careful not to bend any of it, if at all possible. I mean, you can bend this because it's just scrap paper that you can use for testing other markers. But when you go to take your design off, try to keep it as flat as possible. That usually means that instead of bending the paper, you want to flex your cutting mat and try to keep your cut element as flat as possible as you lift it off of the mat. Especially watch out for the tail or any of these points that are not very thick because if you get a fold in those, it is going to be noticeable and we want to try to make this as perfect as possible. There we go. It is definitely possible to lift it off. That's also another reason why it's so nice to use the Bristol board. With it being a little bit heavier than cardstock, it's easier to keep that perfectly flat finish. It always makes it easier for cleanup if you just throw the pieces randomly throughout your room. Don't do this. As part of the design, there are also two optional snowflakes that you can use. One of them is a corner design, and I will show you how this is a corner design and this is a side design, but you do not have to use these. If you find that your shadow box is too full, or if you feel that there is a space somewhere and you want to put one of those in, that's what they're there for. So now we have our pieces, and you can see that the two on the banner the O there has a little connector piece because otherwise there was no circle to the O and you definitely need that circle space in the middle. And then we have our optional snowflakes. So three really important pieces, two optional pieces, and now it's time to move into our frame. So again, this is the nine by nine frame from Ikea. And while it has a nice sturdy frame, it just has plastic in the front, which well, sometimes you might think that's not ideal. It's great for storage with your other Christmas decorations because you don't need to worry that it's going to break easily. Now, it does come with this backing portion and we are not going to be using that for the actual display item, but it might be smart to keep this for storage so that at the end of the season, you can put this on the back and it will protect your work inside. Now inside here, we also have this frame mat. We're not gonna be using that, so that one you can throw out. And then you'll see that your frame comes apart into a few different pieces. There is a frame inner and you want to take that out. And then there's also your plastic for the front. We are going to be using this and you need to peel off this terrible plastic covering that they put on there so that they can laugh at you as you try to peel it off because it's not as easy as you might think. Again, there should be like a little tab or something, but you know it's Ikea. If you don't have to put it together, then they make it painful in another way. Anyways, there we go. We have our empty frame, put the plastic back in there and keep this part to the side because we are going to start to compile it and we're going to be doing it in two different stages. Move all of your pieces to the side so that you can place your frame down in front of you on your desk. First, we're going to place the joy piece. Now, this piece has a long, attachment bar along the top and then it has the portion that hangs down into the shadow box. We need to fold between the portion that will be hanging and the attachment bar. If you have an X-Acto knife you can always just very gently score along those lines so that you'll get a crisp fold but this is not necessary. You can also just do this by folding carefully along the attachment bar edge. Make sure if you are cutting that you're not cutting too far because you definitely don't want to cut any portion of this off. You need to make sure that your attachment bar is attaching to both sides of your design so that it hangs perfectly. 
Once you've scored it, you want to fold it so that it's at about a 90 degree angle with the attachment bar ready to attach to the top here. Now we're going to place Joy along the top portion of your inner frame. And this attachment bar is actually perfect because we don't want Joy to be right flush against the front. That would mean that it'll be sitting right against the plastic and we wanna have a little bit of a gap. So instead, you're going to place the back of the attachment bar on your table and then press it up into the top of your design. Take your permanent adhesive. I'm using the Tombow permanent adhesive or you can use photo squares or anything like that that will not show but can be used to attach this to the top. And at first I had used temporary glue dots but that meant that every day or so I realized that my joy had fallen and was sitting at the bottom of the frame. So a permanent adhesive is definitely a better option. Again, fold it at your 90 degree angle place it onto your desk surface and then push it up about centered in the frame and once you have it up there you're just going to push it into place. That one was super easy. Now we're going to go on to our bottom word which is world. Again you're going to score it along the bars and now we have two bars here. The reason we have two bars is because while Joy is hanging gravity will hold it in place whereas world is going to be standing up. If we fold both of these bars one direction it's likely it's going to fall forward or fall back. So instead this one you're going to score along the front on one of the attachment bars and then score along the back on the other attachment bar. Having them standing opposite to one another will help to make this stand up straighter inside the frame. Once you've scored it, you can fold your design. One folds back and one folds forward. And now you're ready to attach this onto the bottom of your frame inner. You're going to put your permanent adhesive onto both base sections of your design. Just watch out that as you're putting the glue onto the other side of the other section, this one doesn't accidentally get stuck to anything, especially to your paper design up on the top. That would not be great. Now, just like we did with Joy up here, you can put the back side of that attachment bar for World onto the desk surface and then bring it down to touch onto your frame. You also wanna make sure that this one is centered in the frame. And once you have it centered and touching, you can press that one onto your frame. Now, this one you want to actually attach in line with the front of the frame so that it's flush with that. Try not to have it twisted or pulled apart but just naturally place it where it wants to sit so that this one is flush with the front and your other one is flush with the back. Having those two opposites will help this to stand up a lot straighter. Now we're going to place our ribbon in the middle. This ribbon is not quite as important as the other words in our design so this is actually going to be placed behind these two more prominent words. We are going to use the frame by flipping it over and flipping this so that it is the reverse side. So you're seeing the entire design from the reverse. And this is actually going to get tucked around the edges of the frame. That will help to keep it tight because it will get put into your larger frame afterwards and that will just help hold everything in place. Again, you're going to want to score these. Now this time you're scoring it from the back of the design so that it will fold forward. And now place it onto your design, fold it around and make sure that you have it placed in such a way that it will be easily visible and won't be hidden behind one or another of the words. Once you have an idea of its placement, you can attach some permanent adhesive to the front side and then stick it to the outside portion of your inner frame. Outside, inner, inside, front side, back side. It almost feels like a bit of a Dr. Seuss craft here. Again, just make sure that you have it 
centered in such a way that it will be visible. Attach it to your frame, and then it's time to put this inside our larger frame. Now, you still want to put this so that it's facing down and slowly fit this inside the larger frame. The only thing you want to watch out for is that these tabs on the side actually get tucked in between the two frames, like a little tab sandwich. There we go. Once you have it placed, pull the black tabs down so that it will hold that inner frame in place and easy peasy, your shadow box frame is done. You can prop this out, you can put some twinkly lights behind, but you have a simple, quick and easy Christmas craft that you can use to decorate your home or give as a perfect, inexpensive and easy Christmas gift for anyone on your list. So if you look at this and you think that it might need another snowflake or two to fill it in, that's why you have these two optional snowflakes. You can score them in the exact same way that you did the others or simply fold it along the attachment bar and place it inside your frame wherever you think it will look the best. This one is a corner snowflake and it will stand nice and tall right in the corner once you fold both of the attachment bars. This is only one of so many Christmas DIY tutorials that I have up. There's an entire playlist that you should check out with ornaments, with decorations, with all sorts of different ways that you can DIY your Christmas this year.